Hello everybody, Dr. Powers here. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at the Module 3 assignment and I'm going to be going through in, in detail just how you handle everything in Excel. Of course this is going to be based very much on what you've done for the Module 2 assignment and you should keep your same data and your same uh, Excel work. So we want to start from the Excel uh, file that you were working on for assignment 2 which you will have saved. <laughs> so uh, again you can download the data from here although you should be using the data that you already have. It's the same random sample of 30 listings from that same one region that you chose and we're going to also be going through this template. Uh, well, so filling out through this template you want to include your charts that you're asked for and uh, everything in the template uh, so I don't have to look at a second file. Uh, so don't just put stuff into the Excel. You want to copy the relevant charts from Excel into this, the template. So let's look at what's your, what you're asked to do here. Uh, pretty much everything we have is already going to be uh, straight from Excel. Um, so I'm going to, so you're asked first to state your regression equation, which as you recall, we put onto our scatter plot and so we have it right there so we don't have to recalculate the the equation it's right there for us um, determine r the correlation that's something that we'll need to do in excel so how do you do that we're going to use the corel function that's correlation we're going to calculate the correlation of our two variables so type in equals c o r r e l and then a parenthesis we're going to select the first list of numbers, the square feet, from the top of the list and scroll down to the bottom. Okay. And then put in a comma, and then we're going to select our second list of listing prices. And I'm going to close the parenthesis and hit enter. That's my correlation. I'll put a note there. The correlation is going to be a number somewhere from negative 1 to positive 1. It is the square root of my r squared. The same r squared that's on this chart, it's the square root of that. Of course, if it was slanting downwards, it would be the negative square root of it. But it's the square root. All right, so cor this correlation is very, very big. <laughs> it's close to 1. Um, and so I would say it's a very strong positive uh, association, a very strong correlation. Um, we're going to, uh, looking at this, I do see some outliers in my data and you want to comment on whether you see outliers, of course. Um, now, one of the things we're asked here, examine the slope and the intercepts. The slope uh, from my equation is 140.13 and the intercept is 75 374. We're asked to interpret the two of them. The slope makes sense. It is saying this is the average or expected change to listing price when you increase the square footage by one square foot. All right, that's the expected change in listing price. The intercept, however, does not make any sense in this context because in order for us to interpret that 75,000, we would be plugging zero in for X. So what does it mean? A, what a, a listing price for a house that has zero square feet. That doesn't make any sense because houses are not listed if they have zero square feet. The listings that produce this model only were houses that were, it looks like 140, 100, uh, 100, uh, 1400 square feet was the smallest. So to assume that this linear trend extends down to zero would be, um, would be bad stats. <laughs> we don't extrapolate beyond the model. So we can't attribute any meaning to the 75,374. Going back to this, it says to determine the value of the land only. There were no listings that were land only. It's impossible for us to use this model to explain what land only would be. So that's not something that we can do. Um, I, it says that the price if the house is zero, the price value is a land. This is not true, and I disagree completely. Uh, and so I don't want you to interpret that as the value of land. That's me. And I'm going to stand by that. I'm not going to change my mind. So moving on, um, 
the r squared coefficient, that's the coefficient of determination. That is, this is given in Excel, uh, once again to show you. It's, we have it on our plot, we can interpret that. That 0.94, uh, 77, that is the proportion of the variation in listing price that our model explains. Basically, that's, how, that, that's the proportion of variation in listing price that's explained by variations in square footage. Uh, and you can interpret it that way. It is not what proportion of the dots are on the line. That's not what it means. It's not what proportion of the data our model is close to or anything like that. It is what proportion of the variation in listing price is explained by variation in our predictor or in, in square footage. That's what it is. That's what the 94.77% is. So you can interpret it in that way. Uh, and finally, you're asked uh, for some other questions, and um, is the square footage for homes? So there's a couple things that you can do by just by looking at comparing it to national statistics. Um, for every 100 square feet, how much does the price go up? Well, you, you use the slope for that, right? Um, I'll give you a hint. It's if the slope was the expected change for a one square foot increase what would be the expected change for a 100 square foot increase? I'll let you answer that question on your own. Um, and then you're finally asked, what square footage range would the graph be best used for? And as I said, you can really not extrapolate beyond the range for square footage. So you can just look at what's the, the smallest and largest square feet, and we can say that this model can, can safely be used to predict uh, listing price for any square footage within that range beyond that it's not, uh, it's not a really a valid model. There's no evidence that this linear relationship exists beyond that range. Um, again, use the template and remove all the bracketed text and go through the rubric one category by category and make sure that you've done everything that you're asked for. And then you will get 100% and I hope you do. All right, that's everything for this assignment. Uh, clearly based a lot on what you did for module two um, and I'll uh, then and these will both be uh, kind of the basis for the work that you'll be doing for project one so that's going to be in the next video all right bye bye